In this video, I will show you how to find the exact value of a trigonometric function when you don't have a special angle given. And we will be using our sum and difference identities to make this magic happen. Um, throughout this process, I will assume that you have memorized the facts for the special angle. So if you have not memorized these values, you need to pause the video and memorize them right now. First, I need to take this angle and split it apart into two angles that are special angles. So let me focus on that. Um, if I take 7 pi over 12 and I subtract a special angle and I usually use pi over 4 because this almost always gives me another special angle. Um, let's see what we get when, when I do this. I would need like denominators, so I would have to multiply this by 3. So now what I have is 7 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 is going to be 4 pi over 12. So that means that 7 pi over 12 uh, minus pi over 4 is equal to, I'm just reducing this down to pi over 3. And uh, so that means if I add pi over 4 to both sides, I have the following fact. 7 pi over 12 is equal to pi over 4 plus pi over 3. So that allows me to rewrite this original problem um, in the form sine pi over 4 plus pi over 3. Okay, and this is what I'm going to use for the rest of the problem. Notice that both of these are special angles, and we have memorized the values um, of these special angles, the trig values. So, now, I'm going to use my sum and difference formulas. And uh, so the sine of a sum is just going to be uh, sine cosine plus cosine sine. So if I use that, that means I'm going to have sine pi over 4, cosine pi over 3, plus cosine pi over 4, sine pi over 3. Okay, sine, cosine, cosine, sine. I'm just going to evaluate each uh, one of these parts. So we have memorized that the sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. And sine pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. Now I just got all, whoops, wrong picture. I got all of those facts off of this chart that we have memorized. Uh, so just simplifying this expression down, I have uh, radical 2 over 4 plus radical 6 over 4. And that's going to give me for my final answer uh, radical 2 plus radical 6 over 4. So I'll just put that up here though. So that's going to be radical 2 plus radical 6 over 4. Okay, let's do the same thing for number two. Again, the first thing I need to do is figure out how to split this angle apart. So I've got negative 5 pi over 12. And uh, so like I did before, I'm going to subtract uh, pi over 4 and see if that uh, helps me. So again, for like denominators, I'd have to multiply these by 3. So now I have 5 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. Well, that is negative 8 pi over 12. This reduces down to 
um, let's see, f dividing both of these by 4, that's negative 2 pi over 3, which is a special angle. So now I have negative 5 pi over 12 minus pi over 4 is equal to negative 2 pi over 3. Adding pi over 4 to both sides, this gives me negative 5 pi over 12 is equal to pi over 4 plus, uh, sorry, it's not plus, minus, all right, see the negative sign, minus 2 pi over 3. So this is the fact that I will use to rewrite this, which, by the way, this is not subtraction. Okay, so I will rewrite this as the cosine of pi over 4 minus 2 pi over 3. So look at our sum and difference identities. Cosine of something minus something. So it will be cosine cosine plus sine sine. So uh, that means what I have here is cosine pi over 4 cosine 2 pi over 3, not negative 2 pi over 3, just 2 pi over 3, plus, all right, notice that the sine changes, sine pi over 4, uh, sine 2 pi over 3. Now I'm just going to evaluate each one of these four uh, functions separately. So cosine of pi over 4, we have memorized to be radical 2 over 2. Now, cosine of 2 pi over 3, you really need to pay attention to what quadrant we are talking about. So, 2 pi over 3. So, here's a little diagram of pi over 3's to help you visualize. Uh, so, 2 pi over 3 is right here. This is in the second quadrant where cosine is negative. So, um, the reference angle is pi over 3. So, I'm thinking about the cosine of pi over 3 which is one half. But because this is in the second quadrant, I'm going to put negative one half. All right, now sine of pi over four is uh, radical two over two. Now the sine of two pi over three, forget the two for a second, the sine of pi over three is radical three over two, um, but doesn't need a negative sign in front of it. Well, no, because we are in the second quadrant where sine is positive because sine is a y value and y values are positive above the x-axis. So positive radical 3 over 2. Just multiplying this together, I have negative radical 2 over 4 and then plus radical 6 over 4. So putting this together, you know, adding this up using the like denominator that I have, it's going to give me negative radical 2 plus radical 6 all over 4. All right, so that's it for number 2. All right, let's do the same thing for number 3. First, we need to figure out how to split up negative pi over 12. So negative pi over 12 and again let's try subtracting pi over 4 and see what that does. To make like denominators I would have to multiply by 3. So now I have negative 1 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 so that's negative 4 pi over 12. This reduces to negative pi over 3. So what I have is negative pi over 12 minus pi over 4 is equal to negative pi over 3. Adding pi over 4 to both sides, I see that negative pi over 12 equals pi over 4 minus pi over 3. Okay, so. I will use this to rewrite the problem. 
All right, so we have the tangent of angle minus angle. So let's look at the identity. So tangent of angle minus angle. That should be tangent minus tangent over 1 plus tangent tangent. Okay, so again, that's going to be tangent of pi over 4 minus tangent pi over 3 over 1 plus tangent pi over 4 tangent pi over 3. Okay, now we have memorized that the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So that just becomes 1. So I have 1 minus. Um, the tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. Okay, this is all off the chart. All right, tangent pi over 4 is 1. Tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. Memorize all this. Okay, um, and then now the denominator. So I have 1 plus. Now tangent of pi over 4 is just 1. So I can really disregard that because 1 times anything is itself. And the tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. So I have this. And we're just going to stop here. I'm going to just going to go ahead and call this the final answer. Problem number four is set up a little bit differently. This time, we're given an expression in the form of one of our sum difference formulas. Can you recognize which formula it is? So I see sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Okay, so that's one of these two. Let me look back again. Um, it's addition, and when it comes to the sine formula, um, if the formula has addition, then it was addition to begin with. So this must be the sine of an angle plus another angle. All right, obviously these are the two angles. So I should be able to rewrite this as the sine of 3 pi over 8 plus 5 pi over 8. Okay, now if you think of it uh, the other way again, you should see that these are equal. If I had given you this as the original problem and said, what do I do now? What do, how can I apply this formula? You would have said, oh, the sine of uh, the sum of two angles will go sine, cosine, plus, cosine, sine. And then that would have given you this, sine, cosine, plus, cosine, sine. So these are definitely equivalent. But our goal is to evaluate this. So it will actually work out to our advantage if we go ahead and add these together into a single angle. All right, notice that these are not special angles. That's why we couldn't just evaluate the four parts separately as you've seen in the previous three problems. We need special angles. We need pi over 4, or pi over 3, something like that. Um, now, 3 pi over 8 plus 5 pi over 8 is 8 pi over 8. All right, those 8s cancel out, so that's just going to give me sine of pi. So what's the sine of pi? Well, this is a quadrantal angle. Okay, so pi is here. So the coordinates here are negative 1 comma 0. Sine is a y value, so zero it is. That's why the answer is simply zero. All right, and that is going to be the end of this video. I hope it was helpful, and I will see you on the next video.